What's good, Source Nation? It's a wonderful day right now. The happiness is flowing in abundance, and we've got so much going on here. Uh, we're definitely glad to be coming back to you today because we have what we believe is an, is an amazing show. We got an amazing guest here with us, but we have Bobby G. Summers here, and he is an absolute legend in this music industry. We're so thrilled to be connecting with him today. And as always, we want to say thank you to you all for tuning in with us. So now I want to go ahead and definitely get into this show that we've been kind of pining all day and waiting to get started with here. So I'm going to go ahead and introduce and welcome in Mr. Bobby G. Summers. How's it going, man? It's going well. How are you? I'm doing really, really good. As I said before, when we, you know, when we really got this started off, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to connect with you because I feel like you've done so much in this industry and you've made a path and you've made kind of like a yellow brick road for so many people who have obviously come behind you and people that really want to do this. And there's so many things that people have been able to learn just because of the things that you've done in the industry. And, you know, obviously we mentioned, you know, those huge groups, you know, <laughs> in my mind that, that you've been a part of. And I know that modestly you think it's wow. just, just, just some big things that you had going on, but, Thank you. To, to me, everybody knows the deal. And to me, everybody knows the Barcades. If they know anything about music, they know these groups. And obviously, you know, you're fully responsible for the successes that have gone on with these two groups. So thank you for everything that you've done. And thank you for talking with us today. Thank you. Again, a, a great honor and a pleasure to be on your show. You, you do so much, like you said, I do. You, this is a vehicle that, you know, you can come on and we can talk about pretty much anything. And it's just a great opportunity for people. And I, right. I've been saying the word. I tell people about your radio show all the time. And I appreciate um, that. And I'm going to continue, you know, to do that. So we got a good relationship. We're going to build on it. We're going to make it grow, you know, and let's just, you know, keep our eyes on the prize and the bigger picture and just continue to do what we do. Definitely. And I mean, there, there's so much with obviously the things that you're doing that really helps to spearhead the things that we're able to do, you know, with Source Radio Network and with Urban Grandstand Digital and Indie Soul Saturdays and all of the other shows that are here on the ne network as well. You know, the things that we're doing with Internet Radio and the fact that we can reach people, obviously not just across the United States, but in so many other countries and people in so many other areas are watching and they're tuned in and listening to the things that we have going on. And it's, it's amazing how far technology has really taken us. And I told you, too you know, much technology. Can really do this <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's too much technology. Man. Right. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just teasing. It's plenty. It's, it's awesome. Tech, you know, I'm a tech head, man. So yeah, I, I am too. <laughs> so, I, I'm, I'm the same way. I mean, I, I got five or six laptops sitting around here, man. And I got our iPads everywhere and, yeah all kinds of stuff so i i know i'm a tech head too man these phones my wife and kids man they i got <laughs> ipads yeah chromebooks i didn't know i hadn't even heard of a chromebook until my daughter uh, jasmine said i want a chromebook for my birthday i'm like what's a chromebook <laughs> right and it's, like, it's like a computer ipad hybrid yeah all, all in one, one. Yeah, I'm like, okay, but I got to have that. I got to have that. And then my son, Aiden, he want, wanted a Samsung tablet so he can play Roblox or whatever. <laughs> and it only plays on these things, man. And then, then again, like I was I was mentioning and talking to uh, Tracy, you know, I recently got married. And it's just, you know, my, my girl is incredible. She's super creative. She says she's not into tech that way, but you're right. <laughs> 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 yeah about that right right so, but yeah man you know it's all good technology is amazing and it allows us to do this it allows me as a producer and a writer and an artist to put music out whereas i think we may have touched on this a little bit the last time we spoke whereas back in the day you had a group of people in a building in a room that would judge your music right before it got to the masses and I, I've always despised those a &R kind of situations because it's not fair to the world, forget the, the country, or, you know, for so much great music to be unheard, you know, because this person didn't like that particular song, but there's a billion people that probably would. So with, with 
uh, radio shows like yours and being able to go to YouTube and iTunes and put your stuff out on, on social media. Now, where are the big record labels? <laughs> right. Know, they shrunk. You know, my label can do what they can do now. And through vehicles like, you know, your radio show, I'm able to do it. You know, so I thank you, man. You're talking about me. <laughs> you guys are awesome. <laughs> it's amazing, too. You mentioned, you know, obviously the fact that there were so many other people that were involved and kind of sitting to, sitting on the sidelines, judging the music before it mm -hmm. came out to the masses. And obviously, the you know, the, the big the big labels like the Sonys and, you know, mm -hmm. the Mercury's back in the day and just all right. these different labels that were out there. Like, where do you really see things going, you know, with, with labels now? I see, okay, let's start even before the label. Let's start with the, the major recording studios, right? Right. It's kind of a bittersweet. The bitter being that, you know, when we left analog, a lot of youngsters, new millennials, whatever you want to call them, don't understand the analog concept. Analog was when we used to go to, to tape, to two-inch tape in multi-million dollar studios. And... Uh, with the way it's happening now, where we can, like now, I got to set up in my living room right now. I can record an album right here and never leave home. Right. Matter of fact, I'm doing it as we speak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, with the record, the, the recording studios, they've all closed. A lot of them have shut down a lot. I mean, there's just tons and tons of money that is, I ain't going to say it's wasted because a lot of them produced a lot of hits and they made a lot of money, you know? So if you didn't flip with the time, it's kind of like going from four track tapes to eight track tapes to cassette to CDs now to streaming, you know, thumb right. drives into streaming. So, you know, you got to move in, in with the times. And that's one thing that I am determined to constantly keep my ear to the ground and, and change with the musical times, even though a lot of the stuff out here is non-musical music it's what people are used to. So slowly but surely, if we can make that turn, we'll go back to some real music. But that's getting to the point that you just made of where music and the record companies are going. Record labels are, the indie labels now are using more distribution through the major companies. So the majors, Universal, Sony, I don't even know if there's any too many more labels. On it's Universal really not. <laughs> They're used more for the distribution network, which should have been the way it was in the first place. Right. You know, um, instead of telling somebody your record's not good enough to be on the radio. And then you turn around and those people trickle down to the radio stations because the major, you know, what happened was all, a lot of like Sony bought all the radio stations across the country. And then they just start playing their artists, you know, which shut out millions of great musicians and right. you know, singers that never had a chance to be heard. So with the streaming and with the media, uh, social media and, you know, what we can do now, at least there's a, a equal shot for everybody. It's right. a level playing ground. I don't have to give you my soul to put a record on your label. Major record labels have ran scared. They've shut down. They've closed uh, everything down except their publishing possibly in the distribution network which are the two things they should have been used for anyway right and then when you really look at it too just like you said you know you you often had people telling you that your music wasn't good enough whereas now you don't need somebody else to put it out you can pretty much just put your music out there yourself absolutely absolutely you can get on cd baby and they'll put your records you know itunes uh, uh rhapsody all the major uh download you can go, you know, and, and spend minimal money right? And, and do it, you know, and I've always used to push promotion, even when you had a big record deal. A lot of people used to get major deals and a lot, you know, millions of dollars and they'd spend millions of dollars on cars and houses and their record, you know, was okay. Or either they had a light hit and they, and, and no push behind it, you know, and uh, instead of using hiring independent promoters which I learned that from, from Willie Mitchell, which if you know who he is, Willie is, uh, well, he's passed. He was like my dad, you know, I loved him. But he was a guy that, that produced and wrote a majority of Al Green hits. Right. And Willie, we call him Pops. Pops used to tell me all the time, you know, if nobody can hear the record, how's it going to be a hit? You know, 
So the promotion part of it, getting it, first of all, getting it into the right places and then promoting it, those are the key factors. And it still is today. Fortunately, if you have your social media tight, which, you know, like I said, uh, Twitter, YouTube, Instagram, you know, if you have all of that tight and a website, I mean, you can push people to those places and bombard the masses with your product, just like the big companies used to do. Because all it is is repetition. Right. You know, if, how many times have you ever heard a record you started off not liking? A lot of times. <laughs> a lot, a lot oh, of times. And then the next thing I know, I'm turning around and I know all the words to it and I'm singing it. Yeah. And It's repetition, man. That's right. all it is. And even more so is simplicity in music. And I am just was turned on to a style of rap that I don't think I can get behind. I don't care what it's called. Mumble rap. Have you heard that? <laughs> Have you heard that, man? I have, but I guess kind of in the same sense. It's not just that. It's a lot of rap and hip hop today that I just can't get into. Like my son is 12 and he listens <laughs> to just about everything that's out there and he loves it. And if I go out and I'm covering these people, he wants to go and all of that kind of yeah. stuff. And it's crazy because sometimes I have to go to him so he can tell me about what they've done and the stuff <laughs> that they put out because I'm like, I just don't know. Like a lot of them, I don't follow them. Right. Right. And that's incredible. My wife always says, I like this music right here. I like, And if we're in the same car, man, I'm like, babe, put on your headphones or something. Right. Cause I, mean, I can't take that. You know, I, I do love Bruno Mars. I love that cat. Oh, he's, yeah. He's putting some beats down with real instruments. I even like Kendrick Lamar is awesome. You know, yeah, I mean, he's doing some awesome things. So I just like the people that I feel like they, they really have a message that they're trying to get out there and they're really trying to reach somebody. And the people that can kind of cross genres and right. you know you put something out there just from different areas and different genres and whatnot i think the more that they're like that so again so again we say bruno mars and you know a lot of the pop singers and whatnot out there i can really get with a lot of what they're putting out there versus yeah. a lot of the straight hip-hop and rap i mean i i never thought i would say that a lot of it is just too violent <laughs> for me but a lot of it is just yeah. it's yeah. just too violent and i mean I can get into the production and stuff like that, but I got to be more mindful too of what I'm listening to because the reality is my son is picking up whatever I listen yeah. to and then he likes it. Yeah. So if I'm listening to this crazy stuff out there, then he's going to be listening to it too. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And, you, and you're hundred percent right in thinking that way. Cause I have two kids, you know, seven and 11. Okay. That, that are very impressionable also. So when I create stuff, I create it based around that kind of theory. Right. Would I let my kids or would I, would I want my wife to hear this or would I want my children to listen to this? Right. I just finished a project called Love to Vote, Vote for Love. The artist is Leon Hitchens. He's out of Louisiana. He's actually a minister. And we've been friends for a long time. And he's an excellent writer. And he called me and said, man, I want to do something about getting people to the polls, Bobby. I mean, because we're losing this. It's like, this is crazy what's going on in politics and i'm like i'm not a big politician at all you know but um what i'm looking at you know it just is is horrifying and like right. you said it's really horrifying to our children i'm like wow my kid walked down the street doing nothing i don't care how old he is and just doing nothing eating a lollipop or some ice cream and can get killed yeah you know and these people they're they're condoning it and matter of fact they're supporting it and they, we got to get these people out of there. We got to get them. So we wrote wrote a song that's kind of a hip hop funky. You've heard it, correct? Have you heard the record? I have. Love to vote and vote for love. And you know, we got to get these kids, these millennials, out, and you know, everybody to the polls, man. So we can, you know, regroup this thing, man, because it's like ridiculous in the streets now. And I'm from the streets, man. I mean, I can take anything but it's kind of scary to me now you know yeah it's amazing like it was pretty upsetting i think just with the whole election thing in general and you know when you when you look back at you know when obama was trying to get in and you know hip-hop really got behind it and you had puff daddy and you had so many other people that were really pushing you know us getting out there and get to the polls and that sort of thing mm -hmm. and it just didn't happen this time around and right. it, it just didn't happen at all. And I, I can get the theory that 
okay, we really didn't have like a, a really good candidate out there, you know, between the two of them. But I just think on the same token, if people had gotten behind it, you know, a long time ago and in the very beginning when you had Bernie Sanders in there and you had, you know, other people, I think that mm -hmm. something better could have come out of this. And then you just have a lot of people who voted you know, the way that they did, you know, for whatever reason. But then you have a lot of people who just didn't go out there and vote at all. And a lot of them were vocal about it. Like, no, nah, I'm not going to vote because of X, Y, Z. But then it's like, they're the main ones that's complaining about what's happening out there. Yeah, absolutely. You're right. So, I mean, you know, like I said, the only thing that I can possibly do is create music that people are going to want to listen to and hope they get the message in the song, you know, because like you said earlier, I'm a songwriter and a creator. And it's like, you know, and if there's a message that's going to get to the masses, it's going to get through either one or two ways. It's going to be television or radio. Right. Those are the two mediums that we have that can deliver a message to the masses at one big swoop. So that's why I'm so into what I do now. That's pretty much where I'm at with this whole thing. You know, like I said, first of all, music's my passion. It is my job. And I take it very seriously. When you start talking about music, my whole demeanor changes. <laughs> I, can be, I can be laughing about anything in the world, you know, any crazy joke or whatever. But right. when you start talking about music, you take it to another level because it's, you know, I want to hear what you have to say. And then I'm going to take it from there. Because like you said, I have been around for a long time and I've been blessed. My career has been just awesome. And my wife, she looks at me and be like, yeah, whatever. You know? <laughs> <laughs> She's a little younger and it's funny because I tell her all the time, I said, do you know who I am? She's like, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> care who you are. Who are you? You know, you're my husband. You're Bobby. That's it. That's what you are. I'm like, in a way, that is awesome because, you know, I always tell her, I'm so glad because I'm glad that we are married now and, and together now because it lets me know that you truly love me for me, you know, and not for a hit record or, right. or, or a bunch of money. And that's the thing for me. <laughs> but yeah, she's like, I don't care who you are. That always makes me laugh. So, you know, I appreciate you, um, you know, knowing and following and looking at my history. I mean, this um, is huge to me. Like, I love the fact that you and I are able to connect because like me knowing the things that you've done, it had nothing to do with the fact that we were going to be talking today. I right. literally grew up on the music that you put out there. So yes. like all of this stuff has been embedded in my mind. And, you know, like I was saying, you know, when we first started off talking, just adding music onto my iPhone, into my playlist that my son listens to my playlist all day long too. So right. it's like he knows all of the songs from the deal and he knows the songs from the barcades. And he um, knows, you know, not just you, but he knows a lot of, you know, other musicians and he knows yeah. the lyrics behind them and he could sing the songs and stuff like that. And again, he's he turns 12 in August, so he's still 11. Nice. And the same way that I was brought up on that music, he's been brought up on a lot of that music, too. So like it's embedded in my mind. So it, it's amazing. And I was telling Tracy that our conversation today I'm actually going to turn it into something written because for the magazine that I publish, we have a column called Legendary, where we look back at the musicians who have really paved the way and made an opportunity for the people that have come behind them. So like making an article out of that, like it, it would be amazing for this upcoming issue that we have. So that's something else that I'm going to do from our conversation today. But it's like an, it's a huge honor for me to be able to connect with you and really talk and just hear the things that are in your mind in the same way that music is your passion and you know everything changes for you when people start talking about it it's the same thing for me and i don't play a lick of music but it's, <laughs> yeah. i mean i i can play drums i played drums all through all basically all through um school from you know being a little kid all the way up until i graduated high school but outside of that i don't do a lick of music but i love everything about it though so i get it yeah, it starts with the rhythm, though. That's the drum beat, that back beat, man. So you, right. know, you got that, you know, your leg up. So, yeah, that's very important. And I appreciate, like I said, once again, you saying that. And it's nice words, man. I've been out there, man. It's been, you know, the, the sacrifices you make, they're all well worth it. If you get one person that can relate and that can appreciate your gift, because right. it is a gift. 
everybody wonders there's millions and millions of musicians but all the room is at the top so you got to really really fight to get to the top and right i, I mean i put that in and i'm going to head back up there my friend so <laughs> <laughs> i don't think you ever left the top man but just asking like honestly what do you think has really kept you there in people's minds because i know i'm not the only person that that feels like you've always been on top and <laughs> what do you feel like got you there and then what do you think has kept you there all this time my playing the actual piano playing and vocals when you're a musician and can't sing you can't relate to what another singer wants under a track you know what i'm saying but if you're a singer musician and and you produce a track you know that if if i was singing this song i wouldn't want to have this right here. So with that being said, in writing songs for different people, whether it's the barcade, whether it's a deal, whether it's cameo, whoever, I know where to place certain instruments. I'm doing a project now, James, that is a guy out of Canada. And he sent me 12 songs. It's been about four days ago. And he just wants my feel in my playability on his tracks and they're pop songs and these are really really good songs well recorded really well written but as he said there's something missing and so i did a couple i sent him a couple of snippets of it and he was like floored i mean he was like dude this is it you know just going all over the place this is what's missing you know it's all excited i mean and i just played two different keyboard parts that i felt would gel and lock the track together for him. A lot of people hire me for my feel. You know what I'm saying? Whether it be on a B3 organ or a Fender Rhodes piano or whatever. But it's more so what I add to it. It's kind of like if you have something that's super sterile, then all of a sudden you sprinkle that flavor on there. You know, then it becomes a nice feeling ride. You know what I mean? Right. So that's, that's what I do. The thing that keeps me on top in short, it's my playability and my, my feel, my feel for that groove, man. So Al Green said the same thing. <laughs> said, hey, got, I'm going to tell you, man, my uh, crowning glory for me, you know who Billy Preston is, right? I do. You know, he passed away. Billy Preston used to be one of my, I mean, just the ultimate Hammond B3 player. And I had an opportunity to play side by side with him on a video shoot with Al Green. And when we were in the rehearsals, he looked over at me. He said, man, you a bad mama jamma. <laughs> and I said, wait a minute, man. I mean, this is Billy Preston, man. <laughs> I'm, like, I'm like, this is Billy Preston, man. I was a young kid when this dude was playing with the freaking Beatles, man. With the Beatles. Right. Here every day. And he's telling me that I'm bad? I was like, oh, my God. I was passed out, man. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and then I'm... Um, you know, like you said, with all the other groups that I've I've been blessed with, God is good, man. I mean, he's blessed my life amazingly, you know, back then and even today. And I can't say it enough. And I know Whitney's listening to me right now, but she is the crowning glory for my entire life. Yeah. And the motivation that's going to keep me going more. So you're going to hear a lot more in the days to come. <laughs> I'm, telling you, I'm telling you now, man. I give God all the glory and honor and I give her, you know, the glory and the honor because she's my purpose, my reason and my motivation now. And when you have somebody writing songs, man, and you got that kind of, you know, lady behind you, man, <laughs> it's, it's, great, it's great to come, James. You, you remember we used to always call it baby making music. Right. <laughs> trust me, man, these songs, are, they're there. And I got some tracks now. Man, if I send you some of the just the tracks, you'll be like, man, can I put this on the radio? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be like, hold it, hold it, wait for it, wait for right. it. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I have that in my life now, man. And those are the things to answer your question that keep me going. And it's going to keep me on top. But I got to get to the tippity, tippity top, James, this time. I got to go. I'm going and I'm going to bring you with me. You'll be I, the first interview I do. I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm looking so forward to it. It's so much more that obviously we could talk about, Absolutely. like like Al Green. And I mean, you've mentioned him a couple of times and I know that you toured with him for 14, 15 years. Yeah, um, <laughs> I mean, that's like amazing to be able to say that you toured with Al Green. <laughs> it was a blessing. I mean, it was very, very interesting. I was music director, so I 
had a lot of responsibility, a lot of the fun in it. I never was a party person. I never will be, you know, the other guys in the band, you know, after the gigs, you know, they go out and hang out. I was always, as soon as that, as soon as he said good night and I cut the band, I'm in my room on my computer getting ready for the next gig. And that's how, how it was all those years. Advancing dates, you know, to this day, I've never smoked a cigarette, done drugs or drink. So that wasn't something that was appealing to me. It was always about the music. And I tell any youngster, here's my public service announcement. Leave cigarettes, drugs, and alcohol alone, young producers. It don't make your music sound good. It just does not. <laughs> so don't believe the hype. <laughs> Everybody thinks, hey, you get high, you can play better. Oh, no, you can't. I have fired plenty of musicians that thought that. So, <laughs> you know? so you're, um, that's where I'm at. I think that all of that is amazing, though. Yeah, so we just have to be encouraging, man, and keep the music good. You know, write good lyrics, write clever, infectious hooks. You know, make sure that the uh, writing and the, the actual song forms make sense instead of you start at one point and you end at the same point you started. I always ask writers, do you have an intro? Do you have a verse? Do you have a, a bridge or a change, as you call it? And then you have an outro. And a lot of people's like, what are what is that? You know, <laughs> oh, wow, really? <laughs> you just asked me that, really? It's where you start the song one way, then you go through your verse and you explain the song, then you tell people what this song is really getting ready to do, and then you go out. Right. <laughs> oh, we got to do that. I've heard that in so many seminars and workshops that I've done, man. It's crazy. You know, so. It's, it's amazing how so many artists, they don't know a lot of the basics to music. And I think a lot of it has to do just with there being a lot fewer people involved. Like if you look at a lot of the artists that are out there now, like that whole development phase is just totally out the window. Like nobody, nobody yeah. ever really gets it anymore. And to me, that's a problem. It's a big problem. I never, and I can't lie, I've never been a Justin Bieber fan, ever. <laughs> Neither have I. <laughs> but, <laughs> and that's not saying gotta, anything bad. I just not, haven't. I can't. Yeah. I, and I think yeah. a lot of it is just because I can't get into a lot of the new school. So Absolutely. I just so he, haven't really he, given it a chance. Yeah, he did his thing. He got on on YouTube and got a, a cabillion hits and right. got a record deal. And he made a lot of money. He was a broke kid. No artist development. He got a lot of trouble. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you take a kid that don't have nothing and give them millions of dollars, they're going to get in trouble. And, you right. know, if you, if they don't know what to do. Yeah, you're right. The artist development is done. You know, we used to, back in the day when we first got our deal, we used to have to almost go to like a school to learn how to handle interviews, to learn this is what's getting ready to happen to you guys. You're going to go out here and it's going to be public figures. You're going to be famous and we we were a good band you know the deal in the early days this is me la ko and, and darnell and before face got in the band we were a good band and we had a heck of a follow i mean back then if our social if we had social media it would probably have been some millions but before the records start coming we groomed ourselves as stars for years for not a lot of years but a couple of years before right. it blew up like we already knew what to expect and when we started touring doing the bigger tours it was like you know this is easy you know this this is like we weren't crazy people weren't writing bad stories about it you know what i'm saying so it was like that and now you know it's you get a million billion dollars and you go out here and buy a ferrari and run it into you know a tree and then you you go get another one and, and you start doing drugs and you're drinking and you're all on TMZ, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> looking all crazy, like, what just happened? What I do? What I do? You know? And, um, you know, it's just incredible. And then the parents become the kids because you're making all the money. You right. Know? It's like, I can't talk to him that way or he'll cut me off. You know? <laughs> exactly. I'll cut you off all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> to the top of your head so hard to crack your ankles you better go sit down so <laughs> i know when he's laughing at me right now but anyway it starts at home still even with the music man you know, right when you when you have a a kid that may be a prodigy or seems to be interested in it you you, you got to start that because a lot, a lot of parents are shocked when they find out that their kid has talent right know? And most kids don't, they don't even know. And then all of a sudden, what, what you gonna like me? My mother didn't even know I played piano or anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. It's crazy. My teacher came to my house and I thought I was in trouble. She was going to the house to ask my mother if I could play piano for the Christmas play. My mother said, play what? She said, play piano. <laughs> said, he plays piano. She's my mom was like, no, he don't. She's like, yes, he does. <laughs> and I had to go up to the school and 
and play songs for my mother on the piano. Ain't that crazy? It's very crazy, but I see it a lot though. So I yeah. mean, I, I know for a yeah. fact that it's true. Yeah. So we just got to, you know, be mindful. My son wants a rock guitar, as he calls it. He's like, you don't give me a rock guitar. I'm going to give you an acoustic guitar so you learn how to play it. If that's what you really want to do. Right. You know, instruments will be all, you know, are all around the house, studio stuff all around the house. It's going to be there all the time. So, you know, I'm going to encourage it, you know. So my daughter plays clarinet. So okay. I'm in there, you know, I'm in there. So I want to give a shout out to Aiden and Jasmine and Whitney. I love you guys, you know. So that's where I'm at with the whole thing, man. So now you have the new song that's out there now love to vote vote for love i imagine that there's a full project that's gonna you know ob obviously also be behind this so talk a little bit about what else is going to come from that project we've discussed it uh, leon and i and like i said he's an amazing writer a lyricist and we got a couple of more things because you know we're both in our you know and <laughs> it's, like, it's like we realize that we're not going to be hip-hop kingpins anymore <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna be bruno mars so we have to be realistic about you know what we're looking to do in our demographic it doesn't have to be jazzy but it can be like i told him it can be kind of hip-hoppy funky with old school flavors like you just said you know and that's what we are aimed towards it'll be more r&b-ish singing this record here had a specific purpose and that's to get people to hear the song, understand the lyric, and get out and vote. Right. You know, if we get it in the right hands with your help also, and with everybody, we get it in the right hands, you know, the record is skyrocketing. And I told Leon, we're going to find a charity. We're going to donate a lot of the, the royalty proceeds to something other than our pockets, you know. So we're even, you know, looking for that type of something for this particular record not to get hyped just because of what the record represents. Right. It could be something that helped fraud voter suppression. I don't care. It could be, you know, we can donate to that because it's all out there. A cause like that, because that's what the record is about. You got to love to vote and then you got to vote for love. And that's what's missing. There's no love anymore. You know, this guy that came into the office and made hate the primary choice of half a percent, not even half a percent. <laughs> Whatever the percentage is of those people out there that are that have gone crazy and came out from under rocks and start hanging people and shooting people and talking bad to people and doing things that they would never ever do otherwise. It may have been on their mind, but now they have a vehicle and a venue to act this out. Exactly. I tell people all the time, I tell them I'm not my ancestors. So <laughs> it ain't gonna happen like it did back then. Trust right. Me. It is not. Man, I love everybody, everyone. I love everybody. I'm a man and I'm not going to be, you know, scared. I'm not going to have my family scared. I'm not going to have my friends scared. So let's calm down. Y'all rethink this. If you got to go crawl back under that rock, go home, crawl under that rock, keep that to yourself, you know, right. and, and let it be like Paul McCartney said, let it be. And John Lennon, you know, just let it be. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> It ain't going to be like you think it's going to be, you know, so <laughs> we, we don't advocate violence at all. You know, we advocate peace and, and togetherness. You know, God is a God of together, you know, union, bring it together. The enemy wants to separate us and keep us all separate and confused. So I choose to go with God and be in that union and keep it peaceful. Definitely. And, you know, keep it moving, you know, and through the music, man, that's where it's going. But yeah, this project is going to be more, you know, it's going to be more. We're working on it as we speak, believe it or not. I got so many things on my table right now. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's crazy. When we first came in and I saw the boards, I said, okay, he working. He is working right now. <laughs> <laughs> I was, yeah. My wife kills me because she's like, you know, it's like four o'clock in the morning. Have you been to sleep? I'm like, not yet. Because <laughs> <Not yet. laughs> I play live too, you know. So I, I'll come in normally around 12 
And then my brain is still functioning. You right. Know? And, and and I'll start working on something. And then she'll say, have you eaten? I'm like, no, no I forgot. And she's like, what? <laughs> the other night, she was so mad at me, man, because I was at a gig and I wasn't feeling good. And I had to finish. You know what I'm saying? I had to finish. She's like, you better go home. You tell them you're going home. And I'm like, no, I'm not. You know, I got to finish this. Oh, my God, dude. It was, it was, <laughs> she was so pissed off at me. I'm sorry. She was so mad at me. But. You know, I'm old school, man. The show must go on. You know what I'm saying? Not only that, but we all know how passionate you are about music. And that's kind of what happens when you're doing something that you really love and that you're passionate about. Exactly. I mean, it's the exactly. same thing with me and the computers and all of that stuff. You know, the, the first thing <laughs> my wife will say is, like, you could shut that off now or you could tell them that we <laughs> Going, and I'm like, it's not really that simple for me. <laughs> like, for you, right. it's pretty right. simple because you could care less about it. But yeah. I, I get it, though. You listen to Whitney? You heard him? Yeah. <laughs> so it's like that, man. So it's good to have a passion. You know, like I said, she's so super creative, man. She writes children's books. Okay. And man, at some point in time when we do one, please have her on your show. She's an amazing. Oh, definitely. Artist. She's a heck of a photographer, an amazing mother, advocate for children. She's uh, just got a certificate for advocacy for children. Well, that's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, she does her thing and I'm so proud of her, you know, for that. And I'm telling you, you talk about Beyonce and Jay-Z, you just wait. Look, we're the new Bobby and Whitney. We're and that's the, the, and, and, <laughs> <laughs> the new Bobby and Whitney. That's what's up, man. I think that's, that's what's up. Like, I, I'm really, really happy. I'm happy and I'm thrilled for, for, for both of you because, like, you know, obviously you've been doing your thing for a long time, but clearly she's yeah. doing hers too. Absolutely. Yeah, and she's coming. She's coming on strong. So trust me, like they say, um, behind every good man, there's a great woman, a greater woman. But behind every great woman, there's a good man, you know, so. Right. You know, I try to be a good man and the support for each other. And, I, you know, that's that we got to have family back, man. And that's another thing about this record that we are putting out. The Love to Vote record is about family. When you see the video, you'll see what I'm talking about. And, you know, when you read the lyric, you'll see what I'm talking about. I actually want to go ahead and play it. And obviously with that in mind, we're going to play a couple of other tracks, you know, here as well. But I definitely want to start off with Love to Vote, Vote for Love. And then uh, Behind Nose, we'll play New Old School and we'll also play If You Love Someone. So kind of talk briefly. Now, I know you've talked about Love to Vote, Vote for Love already. But for those who may just be coming back in before we go ahead and play it, just kind of give a little blurb about the track and then we'll go ahead and uh, start that. Sure. Love to vote and vote for love is an idea of, we have to make a change. We have to make change. You know, we're going into a dark place right now. And in order for us to change that, we have to get out to the polls. We have to uh, change the senators, the governors, the mayors, all the way up to, you know, all the city council and everything. We have to change because this old school way that they have is not working. And with what we have in the White House right now is making it horrible. This guy has free reign. So with this record, we're advocating for family, love, peace. Get out there. You can dance to the polls. I mean, I don't care if they play the record and you do an electric slide right up to the booth. <laughs> you know, do, do what you got to do, but get out there and vote and let's make a change, people. I mean, we like you said earlier, we did it for Obama. We can do it for anybody else. I mean, it right. doesn't have to be a, a Hillary Clinton. It could be whoever is for right. You know, it doesn't even matter if it's Democratic, Republican, or right. whatever that other one is. If this person is right, he has a righteous way of thinking, I'm good with it. You know, I'm good with that. But when you get people in there that's that one way and thinking it's like like where we are right now, we need to change that. So people love to vote and vote for love. That's the only way we're going to do it. Okay, so Source Nation, this is Love to Vote and Vote for Love by Bobby G. Summers right here on Indie Soul Saturdays. Son, daughter, 
one and me My legitimate Black Panther's on the movie screen Ain't worried about nobody trying to start some mess Cause I got something better than a bulletproof vest Ain't got no gun, me and the Lord And my voter registration card I love the vote that definitely can hit a lot of people man you know obviously with, with it being in the right hands yeah yeah that's what i'm saying we get it out there to the right people it's gone we'll be right there where we're supposed to be man now what what kind of feedback have you gotten back from it already you know as people begin to hear it or have you been sharing it with people no you just debuted it oh that's what's up man that's <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's what's up for real. So, like, what what's your plans, you know, obviously on, you know, getting to that point where you actually start performing the song for people now? The artist Leon Hitchens, you know, I'm not planning on going out on the road with Leon Hitchens. <laughs> 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 I plan on continuing to produce and write songs while he's on the road. Now, the fun part would be to go out and do, do a couple of shows, you know, right. and hit a couple of the campaign. That's the big thing. If we can get it in some campaigns, you know, get some people to um, pick it up and play it in their their fundraisers or whatever right. is necessary, you know, then yeah, I'll do something like that. But other than that, man, I'm at the pad with my family, man. <laughs> <laughs> God, make, hey, how you doing, Leon? How's it going? Where you at? What? You're in Alaska. Okay, good luck. Hi, hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, but I've you're right, though. Book. Like, it doesn't just have to be like a presidential thing, though. It's so many different elections and whatnot that are going on out yeah. there. My goodness. You know, and that's one of the things that we were talking about is this thing can go to all of the people that mean something, man. Of course, I would refuse 
these idiots from playing it. You know, if you remember how they were, a lot of the artists weren't allowing Donald Trump to use music on his campaign. You right. Know, you remember that? I would be the same way. You know, I would not allow any, you know, people that had a derogatory or inappropriate message for the country and the world to play any of my music, man, ever. You know, I don't care about the money. You know, that it is sometimes, you know, all money's not good money. So right. that's where I would be with that. So, yeah, we get it out there, man. We were just talking about trying to hit Tom Jordan and Steve Harvey behind it. And know? that would do some amazing things, obviously, if either of them got behind it. Yeah. So if we do that, here again, it'll be a, a game changer. Now, the other two songs that we're going to go ahead and play, New Old School and If You Love Someone, talk a little bit about both of those, and then we'll play New Old School, and once that plays, then we'll actually go into If You Love Someone. Those are songs that are off of the Something Old, Something New right. CD of mine, and these songs are dance songs and kind of old school. I wanted to keep, you know, that old school flavor on, on this one, and uh, the music itself is, you know, it's just... The sounds and everything I used on them are kind of back 70s, 80s. You know what I'm saying? But right. A good backbeat. So that's for that one. The second title, I like ballads. I'm a ballad singer. Right. So if you love someone, that song basically is a tearjerker. <laughs> <laughs> if you've ever been in love with somebody and you just all in, right? And they don't love you back, whether it's back the right way or the way you feel, but you putting your heart into this thing. It's not a good it's, feeling. It's not a good feeling, man. So that's really self-explanatory. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so yeah. I can say all yeah. day, it's not a good feeling at all. <laughs> right, about that. Yeah, that's that kind of thing. So yeah, that's pretty much that one, man. You know, I'm planning on actually re-releasing that particular record as two because it didn't get the exposure it needed. And I was working with a kind of a not so good uh, distribution company at the time. And it's a real good song. Obviously it's good enough for you to pick out of the bunch and play it. <laughs> <laughs> I love that track. And it was actually Tracy's favorites too. Oh, Tracy, she, she's on point. So. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, those are, are good songs, man. And I hope that people can hear them and pick them up. Some of the songs I'm gonna drop up on iTunes, or whatever, my email address, which is funkyfingers at gmail.com. Okay. Um, people can, if they want it, you know, I can direct you to where you can buy it because it's kind of scarce. It's kind of hard to find, but I'm going to pretty soon make it available again. I think a lot of people will love that. Let me know. Hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Again, God, you guys, I appreciate you so much. Most definitely, man. So we're going to go into both of these songs and then we'll talk for We'll talk for a little bit more after that. So again, we are live here with Bobby G. Summers and we're going into New Old School and If You Love Someone right here on Indie Soul Saturdays. Got it right up. Old School House with a New School now. Here we go. I'm from an old school house the new school house, baby. I'm from an old school house with the new school house, yeah. I can remember days when 
I know that if you love someone, like that definitely was a favorite for a lot of people. And like I said, it was definitely one of Tracy's favorites too. That's when I wrote the song. You're listening to the original when I wrote it. Okay. Actual- but your music is universal, man. So like, I'm, I mean, clearly a lot of people can really enjoy something from that. Awesome. Awesome. Old School House with a New School Bounce. It's a, a line dance record. And, you know, it did what it had to do. It made some noise, you know. It didn't make as much noise as it should have. Like I said, it was working with a not so good uh, distribution network at the time. Right. And so I kind of had to let it go. But the thing about it is, you know, fortunately it didn't go as far as it should have. Cause even if I put it on a new record, a new CD, it can still be new to a lot, a whole group of people. Right. You know? So that's the fortunate part about it, man. Again, I appreciate you guys. You do an amazing job, an amazing job. Man, we try. That's the thing. Like, it's really big for us, like, especially with independent artists and, you know, people like yourself. Like, yeah. we're really, really trying to make a way to get this music out there because I realize, and I mean, I've worked for the Radio Ones and, you know, a lot of other people. And you just realize that a lot of times the independent artist doesn't really have that opportunity to be heard because a lot of people, are not so open to playing the music. Yeah, yeah, I know. So the thing that I've always said about that song is, you know, the music behind it, it it reminds me, number one, of Shalimar and just kind of the vibe of Shalimar back in the day. But then also that song, Watching You by Slave. Right, yeah. It kind of reminds me of that too. Got that feel, man. And that's, you know, the flavor that, that I wanted. And you nailed it. Those are the two flavors that I definitely wanted on a record, you know. Right. Um, when you're partying, man, there's just a certain tempo and a certain groove that that locks that party in. That party, you know, <laughs> kind of like when you hear um, more bounce to the ounce, you know, and Roger, that tempo and that groove, right. When you're able to lock that in and find out, just like you said, walking down the street watching ladies and then the shallow mark stuff, man. There's a line in the song this talks about going down the soul train line right <laughs> right so, so you already know what that <laughs> right there that's right so yeah man i'm gonna keep at it you know i'm gonna keep at it as long as i can right and try to keep some good music in the street create some new stuff i'm not changing up but i'm gonna come a little different on this next one you know just a little bit i got to keep it modern you know and, and current and relevant so It'll come a little bit different, but it'll stay funky and stay like, you know, true to what I do. You know what I'm saying? Now, as we get ready to close out, what does the immediate future look like for you? What things are going on that we can definitely keep a watchful eye out for? One, I'm ready to move up toward the New York area. Okay. So I'll be in that area, in a place where music is appreciated a lot greater than in the South, you know, especially the type of music that I do. And I'm going to connect with some of the producers and the studios up there. So I'm looking forward to that. I've already started booking engagements, actually starting in August. So um, I'm going to be doing live, you know, and finishing up my album and, and these projects that I have from here. And I'll keep you posted on the artist that's coming out of Canada. I was nominated for a Grammy on a project that was similar to, to this one, kind of a pop punk thing. And that market right there is really busting open right now with all the uh, Blue Eyed Soul Brothers for some right. <laughs> creating, <laughs> creating music with funk backbeats, you know. So timing is perfect. I mean, the songs, like I said, they're excellent songs, man. The writing is good. The production is good on it. And I'm just sprinkling that soul food seasoning over top of, you know, and a little barbecue sauce and just a little touch of hot sauce, you know. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's where I'm at with it, with the whole project. And um, I'll let you know the titles and definitely uh, we'll let you know when it's, when it's going to drop. And uh, we can probably get him on, you know, because it's, it's going to have that urban backbeat, believe you me. Like, we're definitely looking forward to that, man. 
I definitely welcome the project. I know that there's a lot of people who really will be looking out for it. So I think it's an amazing thing. I appreciate you so much for the time today. Like, where can people check you out online, you know, being website, social media? Well, I don't do too much of that because, you know, I don't know a lot about it. But, you know, you can get me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash Bobby G. Summers, funkyfingers at gmail.com. You can email me and, you know, we can go from there. I'm always open to new artists. If you got something that's hot, let me know, you know, and we see where we can take it. So, yeah, those places right there, you can Google me, YouTube me. I'm all over the spot, man. (laughs) (laughs) You know, once again, I think it's amazing. I really, really appreciate you. I know this is not the first time that we talk, but it's still all amazing to me. And I love everything that you've been doing. I look forward to the project really hitting out there and, you know, everybody, you know, being able to get to that point of taking it all in. And as always, man, anytime, like you're definitely welcome here. You know, definitely, you. you know, we can get you back on the show. You know, your wife has these books coming out now. So, I mean, she can come on the show. Like, I think it's amazing. Uh-huh. We look forward to, you know, really getting you guys out there. Thank you, man. And I appreciate you guys. Tracy, hey, you know, you know how we do it. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy's awesome. And thank you again, man. I look forward to the next one. Uh, we'll touch bases after we, you know, let the record get in the, in the wind a little bit. And maybe we definitely. can see where the record goes and. You know, you'll be the first interview after we get that Grammy. You know, I look forward to that, <laughs> and I'm I'm in a certain place in my mind right now, knowing that we just debuted that song. So, like, I I think it's amazing, man. <laughs> Thank you, James. I appreciate you, man. You're welcome, man. You have a good one. You too. Peace. Yours.